Mike Shannon, you were a rookie, Mr. Shannon. <laughs> I'm here. See, Euchre is such a distraction, he just... <laughs> Mike, you were a rookie. What was it like to go through that season as a kid? Well, in the final weekend of the season, as you say, there's three games left, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and there was a possible four-way tie for the National League pennant. Only time in history was uh, Phillies, Cincinnati, the Giants, and us, okay? And uh, over in Cincinnati, I think it was Saturday or Sunday, Chico Ruiz stole home with Frank Robinson batting, okay? That's how <laughs> wacko it was. But anyway, and... Uh, Elvin Jackson shut us out one to nothing, that game you're talking about. But they forgot. We had a guy that was a pretty good pitcher, and he's next to me there. And we got to the World Series, and we beat the, the uh, New York Yankees uh, because we had Bob Gibson. He won three games. We had to figure out how to win one other game. We knew he'd win three. <laughs> but the, they, we had a, back then, they, put a, they would compare the positions, you know. They had uh, Kenny Boyer third, and... And then they had Cleet Boyer at third, and the shortstop was Lenz, and they had Dick Rode as a shortstop. And then they had Brock and left and flood and center. And then they had a guy that played right field for them named Mickey Mantle, and they carried him and compared him to me. I said, how the hell can they pick me as an underdog against Mantle? <laughs> so that was my match. But we had Gibson, and that's all we needed. Uh, Gibby, you pitched in relief the last game of the season, right, when he won? You pay, okay, so he couldn't start game one of the World Series. He started game two. Now, this guy started game two, game five, and on, he pitched a 10-inning complete game in game five where they won the game. Tim McCarver hit a three-run homer in the 10th inning for the winning runs. Gibby pitched a 10-inning complete game on two days rest. He pitched game seven and pitched a complete game. And your arm still hurts, right? <laughs> Tim, that's inhuman. That's inhuman, Tim McCarver. Uh, I, I talked uh, to Steve Hurt of the Elias Sports Bureau yesterday. And to give you an idea of what Bob Gibson did, the last 10 games of the year, that year, which included the last three games of the season, starting against Al Jackson, losing on Friday night, coming back in relief and pitching four innings, on Sunday, starting and losing game two of the World Series, pitching eight innings. Three days later, pitching 10 innings to get to beat the Yankees. And then two days later, pitching a complete game. So what Bob did, now listen to this. <laughs> this is good. And I don't think you've ever heard this. The last 10 games of the season, the Cardinal pitchers pitched 90 innings. Bob Gibson pitched 39 of those 90. 39 out of 90. Only one other pitcher in the history of the game over the last 10 days of the season, last three games, plus the World Series, culminating in a complete game victory, was Dizzy Dean in 1934. So Bob Gibson did something that only one other man did over the last 10 days of the 1964 season. Gibby, are you still and tired? And that's a fact. Are, are you still tired? <laughs> Two knees replaced. <laughs> I thought you pitched with your arm. <laughs> no. <laughs> Contrary to what everybody thinks, it, your legs have a lot to do with it. Um, you know, uh, back in those days, I guess we just weren't really that smart. I don't know what it was. <laughs> but we, we did whatever you had to do in, in order to win, and that's pretty much the way I felt. Uh, it, it didn't have so much to do with uh, fanfare and the whole thing and it had to do with with what the guys who who we were with day in and day out throughout the season and uh, oddly enough we were with these guys probably more than we were our families and it was it was something that you owed them that's the way I felt uh, I owed it to myself but I owed it to the guys who were out there with me to 
do whatever I could to help to win, and that's pretty much the way I felt. Bob Euchre, you got a good view of it from the dugout, huh? <laughs> I, have to, uh, I have to be honest, uh, I did know that staff that you were talking about. Did you? I, I didn't hear that. Uh, no, not really. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I have to be honest, I don't even remember playing here. I was. <laughs> Well, hell, you hit 198. I, uh, I, uh, who was that, Myron talking about 56 years ago? That was my last hit, Myron. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I had, a, I had a nice time here. I remember uh, the big part of the World Series for me, and I think those of us who were there would remember. The tuba? When, uh, no, not the tuba so much. It was uh, the Cardinals asking me, they wanted to make a move. Uh, to play Dal Maxwell and ask me if I would take an injection of hepatitis. <laughs> to, uh... <laughs> to, uh... <laughs> so they could make that roster move. And, uh... <laughs> so... But, but I think any of us, any of us who have been with a championship team, I think the one thing that we all remember is the ring ceremony, mm -hmm. which is important to every player who's ever played the game. And I remember the following year, our, our ring ceremony that night, and uh, they threw mine in the left field. I was in the bullpen warming up uh, a starting pitcher, and I found it in the fifth inning. And <laughs> what a, now, what a you, were, you, you were catching fly balls in a tuba. Did you I ever, did that. Did you ever have to pay for that tuba? $260, yes. <laughs> that was a, uh, I didn't catch them all cleanly in a couple of them hit the rim. So kind of dented uh, the thing up, That was not it? real good, yeah, yeah, that was not a good idea. Dick Grote, what do you think of all this? First of all, how do you follow this guy? <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. But I will tell you folks, having grown up in the city of Pittsburgh, played baseball there, for 11 years, world championship. I was heartbroken when I was traded to St. Louis. When I look back on my career today, these were the three happiest years I ever spent in a baseball uniform. <laughs> Think how lucky I could be. I walk in here, I don't know any of these guys who are treated the Cardinal organization was special, and then to be lucky enough to hit in front of Stan Musial for a whole year? <laughs> I never had so many good balls to hit in my life. <laughs> Who's gonna walk me to get to Stan Musial? <laughs> and then to go through 19 big wins and almost beat the Dodgers that year and then follow this group, I'm not kidding you, I played on two world championship teams these guys were the greatest competitors, and Bob Gibson, the greatest pitcher. To play behind him was an absolute privilege. Now, I want to know what was in the water with you guys, because every one of you are broadcasters. Every one. Gibson did some, right? I used to do a show after Cardinal games. With you. you were kind of a curmudgeon, though, you know? No, I, I would have done a lot, but, you know, uh, being a, a broadcaster is a lot like being a politician. You, you have to lie a lot, and I, I had a problem with that. You had a problem with that? Yeah, everybody knew that, so uh, my, my career wasn't going to last too long because I don't want you to tell the truth that often. You know, you know, one of the great things about a dinner like this, not only seeing a lot of old friends, uh, but to finally get to speak to Bob Gibson. <laughs> now, I, I went five years without going to the mound. He, is, he, told me, he told me early in my career that, what are you doing out here? The only thing you know about pitching is that it's hard to hit. <laughs> And I went five years without going to the mound. <laughs> yeah. and, and the one thing I admire, one thing, Bob, the one thing I admire 
about Yadier Molina is not only his catching ability and the way he hits, but when he goes to the mound, the pitchers listen. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell you one of the reasons why I didn't pay any attention to Tim. <laughs> uh, Early on, we had, a, we had a situation, and you know, you pretty much know when there's a guy on first and third and there's one out, less than one out, you know. <laughs> you, you talk to the, the three guys, whoever comes to the mound, I, I didn't listen, but whoever comes to the mound, you know, if the ball goes to the shortstop, you know, or it goes here or there, if it comes back to you, Maxfield's covering, or Javier's covering, what have you. And we only scored one run a game. And on our good day, we scored two. <laughs> And so Tim came out to the mound one day and he says, uh, Maxie's covering. We had a man on first and third and there was one out. He said, Maxie's covering. I said, no. <laughs> he said, what, what do you mean? I said, well, if the ball comes back to me, Tim, I'm coming to you at home. <laughs> well, Tim, that's not the way you play the game. <laughs> I thought, I don't care how you play the game. I am not gonna give up the run because then I have to shut these guys out in order to win. <laughs> so if it comes to me, I'm coming to you, we're gonna cut the run off and then we'll take our chances after that. <laughs> well, that's not the way you play this game. I said, well, that's the way I'm playing the game today. One last thing. <clears throat> One last thing about Bob, Bob used to hate to pitch out. And Johnny Keene used to call the pitch outs, it was an open hand to me. And the fist was a pitch out. So I give the fist for a pitch out and Bob is into a stretch and he said, no. <laughs> I put it down again and Bob went. I put it down again and he said, you're not gonna throw him out anyway. So, Gibby, you did shake him off occasionally, right? A lot? Did, did I shake him off? Yeah. Yeah, L let me explain. <laughs> the, the, what the, about me? The catcher. What about me? Did you shake me off ever? Please. Did I pitch to you? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Bob Euchre. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah, Bob Euchre. Oh, yeah, you know. <laughs> right here. I caught more games than you. <laughs> I went out to see him one day, and he said, what do you want? I said, I'm going out to see Kurt Flood in center field. <laughs> yeah. What were you talking about? Mike, there was a, you told me a story one time. You hit a home run off Whitey Ford in game one of the World Series. And you're a St. Louis kid, of course, playing in the World Series for the first time because you were a rookie. Driving home, the Globe Democrat, I believe, had had an extra paper out there. Newsboy was standing on the corner, waving the newspaper, Shannon home run, and the Cardinals beat the Yankees in game one. What went through, what through your body when you saw that? Well, you know, I, was, I couldn't even dream that good. But the funny thing about that, that home run broke the you and the Budweiser sign out there, okay? And it was a neon sign at the time. It's the first neon sign they ever had in a ballpark. And a guy named John Kern from the John Kern Sign Company, okay? So we go to Yankee Stadium and we come back and I'm coming out of the dugout and this guy's sitting in Gussie Bush's box and he said, hey, Mr. Shannon, can I see you? I said, yes, sir, and he came over and he had a bill and it was <laughs> for that sign and it was $479.82. Well, hell, well, we were only gonna get $5,000 if we won, okay? So he said, I just wanted to show you that this before I gave it to Gussie Bush. I was happy because I thought he was going to give it to me. You know? <laughs> but then he gave it to Gussie Bush, and, and Gussie says, oh, that's all right, boy. You can turn that whole damn sign down if you want. <laughs> Bob Euchre, did you enjoy the movie Major League? It, was that a gas to do? Yeah, I did. It was, um, it, it was a fun thing to do, and I think mainly because they let me do kind of like I wanted to do, right. and I mean, I, you know, you had a script for the movie. It was a, a lot of fun to do it, um, but again, they let me do pretty much what I do anyway when I'm, you know, working Milwaukee Brewers games, 
And that's what's so tough about being here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Just a bit outside, Just right? Just a bit outside, yeah. <laughs> no, but I, uh, no, I enjoyed doing the films, and uh, one and two were good, three, uh, three stunk. It was yeah. on airplanes the next day. It was on airplanes the day after we finished it. It was really terrible, but... No, I, um, I've had a good time doing the broadcasting part of it as Tim and Gibby. I do Radio for Europe broadcast, so... Uh, <laughs> Radio for Europe? Yes, Major League Baseball Radio for Europe. You, you want to tell the story about when you were uh, emulating Hausam on the bus? Uh, going... Oh, I don't want to tell that story. No, I, uh... You guys remember that? No, that was... Uh... Got him traded. Yeah, I was... That was... was a real good story. But, no, I, I had a... The, the funny thing is, and, and I can say this now, I wasn't always a great player. There were times... <laughs> I actually, uh, I, I remember my first probably sport as a kid was football. I remember my dad buying me a, a football, not even a, a baseball, not even a glove or whatever. Uh, I, I remember as, as a kid, youngster, playing catch with my dad and like everybody does and throwing the ball and we couldn't pass it right and couldn't kick it and he wasn't all that great either and <laughs> I didn't know that much about it. And We had a nice enough neighbor came over and put some air in it. And, uh, <laughs> what, a, what a difference. Uh, we throw it and, uh, unbelievable yeah that was, that was all part of it too so but I had a uh, Rawlings sporting goods company here St. Louis was a tremendous thing for me not turn the money that players get today for endorsements but uh, the Rawlings sporting goods company thanks to Frank Torrey who at that time worked for Rawlings sporting goods uh, paid me a pretty decent buck never to be seen using their stuff. So, uh, that was uh, you know, a pretty nice deal, too. So, I've Nick been Rowe, lucky. I've been real did, lucky. How have you put up with this, Nick? Well, first of all, to be very frank with you, guys like Bob Eucher and, and Tim McCarver kept this ball cup very loose when it was very important <laughs> to win every ball game coming down that stretch. And they they made it all happen for us, and this was a great group of competitors right down the line. Well, look. It's a, it's a joy to, to get these guys back here. Tim McCarver, Bob Gibson, Mike Shannon, Bob Eucher, and this young man here, Dick Grote, who played some good shortstop for the Cardinals and drove in a lot of runs. Ladies and gentlemen, a nice round of applause for the 64 Cardinals. Thank you.